Hi guys, my name is Ray Prakash and we are continuing this base system here. So in last video we did this uh, factorial and trailing zeros concept, right? So let's let's extend this to a good question. This question is base eight representation of n factorial ends with fifteen zeros. How many values n can take, right? So we just saw in last video this concept. Okay, so it's a very good question. We try and understand, understand it. So base eight representation of n factorial ends with fifteen zeros. So in last video we have written one point actually, right? So that point was if a base n ends with k zeros, the number will be a multiple of n raised to k, right? So if a base eight ends with fifteen zeros, then number is basically number is a multiple of multiple of what eight raised to fifteen, right? We have written, written we have written this point point in the last video, right? That if a if a base n ends in k zeros, then the number is a multiple of n raised to k, right? So here, and I explained you also, right? Why it is so? So we can apply it here. So that means the number is a multiple of eight raised to fifteen, right? That basically means that n factorial is a multiple of eight raised to sorry. It's not eight raised to fifteen. Yeah, eight raised to fifteen. So you basically need to find what is the value of n which contains eight raised to fifteen, right? So since eight is not a prime number, we can only calculate prime number highest power of prime number in any factorial, right? So what we are trying to solve is now n factorial is basically what two raised to forty-five. So n factorial is basically two raised to forty-five. Are you exactly right? N factorial is a multiple of two raised to forty-five. N factorial is a multiple of two raised to forty-five. So now, now my whole concentration is where does this forty-five will lie? Right? Where does this forty-five will lie? So small hit and trial will give me this right because I'm from high factorial to highest power. Right? From factorial to highest power. We have a rule, right? We have a rule to calculate that we can divide successively and simply count the result, right? But from highest power to factorial, there is no such rule actually, right? A bit of hit and trial has to be involved. Hit and trial, correct? So, like, so what do we remember? Basically, ten in ten factorial, two raised to four, sorry, two occurs eight times and three occurs four times. Two occurs eight times and three occurs four times, right? We just assume it in ratio, right? So, like, so let's say I just don't know. So, n factorial is a multiple of two raised to forty-five. Where should I take for n? N should be thirty, forty, fifty, sixty. At what value I should take for n? Right? I should check for n. Even if I'm doing, even if I'm doing hidden trial, right? But so this will give a little bit idea that okay, I can say that okay, in ten factorial there are there is two raised to eight. So in twenty factorial roughly it is two raised to sixteen. In thirty factorial, roughly two raised to twenty-four. That means in every ten factorial, there are roughly eight twos. This will work, right? So that means if I am looking around forty-five, it's eight five to forty. So in every ten factorial, there are uh, five uh, eight twos here, right? So around fifty factorial, we have forty twos. So I should check in and around fifty, right? So I should check in and around fifty. So if I check at fifty factorial, what is the number of twos here? We just divide successively. Two will divide is twenty-five times, then twelve times, then six times, then three times, and then one time. So this is basically twenty-five plus twelve, thirty-seven, forty-three, forty-seven, right? So in fifty factorial, it is forty-seven. That basically means that two raised to forty-seven. So yeah, we are very close, right? We wanted two raised to forty-five, and in fifty factorial, we have two raised to forty-seven, right? So what is the number here now? So obviously in forty nine factorial, right? So just calculate this in around forty nine factorial and forty eight factorial. So roughly in forty eight factorial. What is the number number of twos here? So number of twos here is again divided by two consecutively twenty four plus twelve plus six plus three plus one, right? This is giving me forty six. Correct, right? This is what I wanted. This is giving forty six, huh? So I wanted forty-five. Little bit further, less I need to go. 
So 46 will do, right? 46 would do. That means basically in 46 factorial, 46 factorial number of two is 2 raised to 23 plus 11, then divide by 10, divide. Keep on dividing by 2. 46 by 2, 26. 23 by 2, 11. 11 by 2, 5. 5 by 2 is 2. 2 by 2 is 1. What is the number here? Number becomes 39, 41, 40, uh, sorry, 30, 42. So in 46 factorial, it is 2 raised to 42. Right? In 43 factorial also, right? Sorry, in 47 factorial also, it remains 2 raised to 42. Right? So let, let me rub this part now. We got this funda, right? This is a funda basically, okay? So doing a bit of hidden trial, where does 2 raised, 2 raised to 45 will lie? Okay. So it lies around 46 factorial. This we came to know, right? Now, so what we can think here is n factorial is a multiple of 2 raised to 45, right? So I, I know that uh, roughly 46 factorial, right? So roughly, roughly 46 factorial has got basically 2 raised to we got 42 there, right? 42. That means 47 factorial also will have 2 raised to 42, right? Because 46 factorial to 47 factorial, only 47 is multiplied. So no 2 getting multiplied. And then 48 factorial, right? So 47 to 48, basically 48 getting multiplied. What is 48? 16 into 3. What is 16? 16 is 2 raised to 4. So basically 4 2s are added, right? So it becomes 2 raised to 46. So this is what I wanted, right? So all this, just to find it, that n factorial is a multiple of 2 raised to 45. So minimum value of n has to be 48. The minimum value of n has to be 48, right? This is clear? Okay. So n factorial is a multiple of 2 raised to 45, right? Therefore, n factorial minimum value is basically 48 factorial. Right. So what I want is, I want this uh, base 8 to end in 15 zeros. That means number should be a multiple of 8 raised to 15. 8 raised to 15, right. But what I don't want is, it should not be, right. That number should not be, okay. Number should not be multiple of 8 raised to 16 because in that, that case, it will end in 16 zeros. That I don't want. That I don't want, right? I don't want this number to end in 16 zeros, right? So I just want all those numbers which only the highest, all those factorials in which the highest power of 8 will be 15 only. That's it. So in which factorials highest power of 8 will be 15 only? So we got right now. We got it. Okay. So what we got in 48 factorial, okay. So in 48 factorial, it is 8 raised to how much? It was 8, uh, 2 raised to 46. That means basically it's still 8 raised to 15. That's fine with me, right? What I don't want is 8 raised to 16. 8 raised to 16 means what I don't want is 8 raised to 16 means what I don't want is 2 raised to 48, right? So I don't want 2 raised to 48, okay? 49 factorial. 48 to 49, nothing getting multiplied, right? So simply, uh, it still remains 2 raised to 46, so still it remains 8 raised to 15, correct? Now, 49 to 50 factorial, 49 to 50, 50 getting multiplied, what is 50? 25 into 2, so one more 2, right? So one more 2 is added, 2 raised to 47, this is still 8 raised to 15, right? Because with 47 2s, I can't have 8 raised to 16. For 8 raised to 16, I should have 2 raised to 48, so still... 50 factorial also is also fine with me, right? Then I move on to 51 factorial, right? So what is 51 factorial now? So 50 factorial to 51 factorial, 51 getting multiplied. So no 2 be, no 2, eight, no, uh, 2 getting added, right? So power of 2 remains 47. That means power of 8 remains 15. That's still fine with me, right? 52 factorial, now 51 to 52, 52 getting multiplied. What is 52? 13 into 4. What is 4? 2 is square. So 2, 2 is I'm getting extra. It becomes 2 raised to 49. 2 raised to 49 means it becomes 8 raised to 16. I don't want 8 raised to 16 because if I take 8 raised to 16, when converted to base 8, it will end with 16 zeros. That I don't want, right? I want it strictly to, it to end with 15 zeros, no, not 16 zeros, right? So I, I won't take any value 
52 factorial onwards right what is my answer therefore my answer is right therefore my answer is answer my answer is 48 factorial 49 50 and 51 therefore n can take four values 48 factorial 49 factorial 50 and 51 so four values is the answer it's a very nice question and a very good concept right Okay, let's practice one more question on this. Then we'll drill further clear. Okay. One more question on this. Base 6 representation. Base 6 representation of n factorial ends with Let's say 12 zeros. Okay, ends with 12 zeros. How many values n can take? How many values n can take? Correct. So let's solve this question now. So base 6 representation of n factorial ends in 12 zeros. That basically means what? n factorial is a multiple of 6 raised to 12 that's it right so we basically, basically need to find it basically need to find in which factorial power of 6 will be 12 that's it right but again same thing because 6 raised to 12 6 is not a prime number here right so 6 raised to 12 basically depends on what it depends on 6 raised to 12 is basically 2 raised to 12 into 3 raised to 12 right and we have studied in factorials that in any factorial, if I'm calculating power of 2 and 3, so in any factorial, if I'm calculating power of 2 and 3, power of 2 will be more and power of 3 will be obviously less. So if 2 is more and 3 is less and 6 is made with the pairing of 2 and 3, right? So if 6 is made with pairings of 2 and 3, so in that case, 3 is 3s are less in number. That means pairings will only depend on 3, not on 2, right? That basically means n factorial is a, is a multiple of 6 raised to 12. Sorry. <coughs> n factorial is a multiple of 6 raised to 12. That basically means that n factorial is a multiple of 3 raised to 12. Calculating highest power of 6 means basically, basically calculating highest power of 3. So just need to find in which factorial we will have n factorial as 3 raised to 12 that's it this is the question right so again bit of hidden trial we'll do right so we'll just we know that in 10 we know that in 10 factorial right roughly you do like this in 10 factorial 3 is occurring 4 times right so roughly in 20 factorial 3 will occur 8 times in 30 factorial 3 will occur 12 times right so you have to check in and around 30 factorial in and around 30 factorial right so obviously 27 is a multiple of 3 so let's check and let's check at 27 factorial right so in 27 factorial power of 3 will be how much 3 will divide 27 9 times then 3 will divide 9 3 times then one time so we're saying in 27 factorial power of 3 is how much 13 right let's move to previous multiple of 3 right so in 24 factorial what is the power of 3 3 will divide 24 8 times 3 will divide 8 2 times that's it Right. So in ten, in 24 factorial, power of 3 is basically 10. What I want is power of 3 to be 12. Right. And what I don't want is, what I don't want is, I don't want that power of 3 becomes 13. 3 power 13, I don't want. Right. Because if it becomes 3 to 13, it ultimately becomes 6 raised to 13. And if it becomes 6 raised to 13, it will end in 13 zeros when converted to base 6. I don't want it to end with 13 zeros because I want it to end in only 12 zeros. Okay. So again, this restriction is there, right? So when I say n factorial ends with 12 zeros, that basically it should not end with 13 zeros. It should exactly end in 12 zeros, right? So power of 3, 13 should not be there. Power of 3 should be at least 12, right? So in which factorial we have power of 3 is basically 12, right? Do we have any factorial here? In which power of 3 is 12, so there are no such values, right? Because power of 3, I won't get 12 in any factorial. In 24 factorial, 3 raised to 10, okay? In 25 factorial, 
again 3 to 10 only because nothing being added in 26 factorial again 3 to 10 and in 27 factorial it suddenly becomes 3 raised to 30 right so 3 to 13 is the number when uh, 13 3 means power of 6 is also 13 power of 6 13 basically means when converted to base 6 it will end with 13 zeros i only want to end with 12 zeros right that means no value so answer is here answer is no value no such value exists Okay, it's clear, right? Now, let's change this number. Okay, it's fine. 12 is no, no such value. Okay. Now, let's change this question to, I'll make this 12 and basically 10. Okay, and then we can solve it, right? So, if I change this 12 as basically 10. Okay. So, if I change this 12 with 10. Okay. So, base 6 representation of n factorial ends with 10 zeros. How many values n can take? Right, so in this case, again, so basically what does it mean? n factorial is a multiple of 6 raised to 10, right? That therefore, it means that n factorial is a multiple of 3 raised to 10 because power of 6 is as good as good as power of 3, right? So, we just by hidden, tra by hidden trial, we need to calculate that which factorial factorial will contain power of 3 as 10. So, we just did it in last slide, right? 24 factorial had power of 3 as basically 10. That means 24 factorial is a number I can take, right? We did it in last slide, but we didn't try. So, 24 factorial is a number I can take when converted to base uh, 6 because 3 raised to 10 basically means 6 raised to 10, okay? 3 raised to 10 is basically meaning is equivalent to 6 raised to 10 and any 6 raised to 10 when converted to base 6 will end in 10 zeros, right? That's what I want, right? So again, what I don't want here, it should exactly end with 10 zeros, right? So what I don't want, it should not end with, okay? This should not end with, should not end with 11 zeros, only 10 zeros, right? That means 11 zeros means it should not be a multiple of 3 raised to 11, right? Okay, so till by the time it is, 3 raised to 10, I am fine with it, right? So, 25 factorial, okay? Again, 24 to 25, nothing being multiplied as been in power of powers of 3, right? 25 is not a power of 3, so power of 3 remains 10. 25 also fine with me, right? Then 26 factorial, again, 25 to 26, only 26 getting multiplied. Again, it doesn't, doesn't contain any 3. So, again, 3 raised to 10 only, it's fine, right? Then 27 factorial. 26 to 27, 27 getting multiplied. What is 27? 3 cube. So 3 extra 3 is being added. 10 plus 3, 13. This I don't want, right? I want it to exactly end in 10 zeros. It can't end in 11, 12, 13, 11, 12, 13 zeros, right? So 27 factorial onwards, I will not take the value. Onwards, I will not take the value, right? Should not take. Therefore, what is my answer now? So my answer for this question becomes... So, answer becomes 24, 25, 26. So, n can take basically 3 values. That is the answer. So, I hope this very good concept is clear, right? It's a superb concept it is. And uh, you can practice any question, right? You can just simply frame your questions on this. Okay. Make make like base 8 representation, n to 20 zeros, and then solve it, right? So, it's a very nice concept. So, in next next video, We'll practice few more questions on base system. Okay. Thank you for watching.